So I've classified this as a hip hinge. You sort of realize that this is a deadlift, but if we try and focus and educate the client on it, it's about hip hinging, then hopefully then that they'll focus more on the hip hinging part than lifting the weight off the ground part, because that's obviously more important. What I tend to do is I find I, I, I will fail a little bit if I put someone straight into a deadlift. Like here's a weight, let's do, you know, your back pain's gone or it's better, let's do deadlifts. Because they haven't got that movement right, they don't know where to bend here, they're still sort of, even though I've taught them neutral spine, they know how to stabilize, as soon as their brain goes, let's go and bend, they'll do something weird. And maybe it's a pattern that they just adopted for 20 years of just bending over and picking up. They haven't learned to do this movement. Now, not that that's a bad thing, but if they want to lift load, the best thing to do that is hinge and be neutral. And if they don't lift it, they do it once a month or once every two months when they move a plant pot, pot plant, plant pot, um, I always get that wrong. Or they move the TV or they rearrange the kid's bedroom. It's, you know, something that's out of the ordinary where they're gonna have to lift, lug, move, and they haven't practiced a movement pattern like this because they don't go to the gym, that's somehow where they go and strain their back or do something, all right? And so if we can try and make sure that we get in that movement pattern into their program, at least they're doing that and trying to help their brain improve some part of that movement pattern, which is about the injury prevention stuff down the track. Because, you know, as, as practitioners, we want to, yes, acutely treat them, get them through that stage, get them strong, and then, hey, here's some injury prevention for the future that is going to stop you getting injured, and that's part of your job as well, okay? Not just hoping they'll be okay and then seeing them when they come back. It's that injury prevention stage. And you can start that by pulling back the deadlift into a hip hinge. Now, I like doing a banded one. Of course, some people go straight to regression where they just, they just got to learn how to do this movement here. Now, it's like when you do a squat, sometimes it's hard if you don't have some sort of resistance giving you some stability or firing up muscles to, for you to stabilize and feel like you're doing something. It's very hard sometimes just to try and do a hinging movement like that if you have no weight. So I always put a band on if that works for people. Claire, can I grab you? So when they're at home, that band or the gym, the band needs to be just affixed to something hard and heavy because it's not going to move. Today, I'm just going to use myself. So if I throw this around, Claire, go a bit, stand up here, please. This band I put just below the ASIS, all right? So because it's, you're going to have the band where they're going to bend. Now, you don't want it up on the waist. You don't want it too far down, of course, for certain reasons, but just in that point there, which is going to be where they're going to bend. Now, what this band will do, now Claire knows how to hinge, so she's good, but what this band will do is provide a bit of resistance for the glutes in the posterior chain. So this will help fire them in those muscles that I want them working the most and help them with a bit of a kinesthetic awareness of, okay, I've got to bend here, not bending in the spine. So if you can imagine, I need them knowing how to stabilize and hinge. Their bridge needs to be really good at this point because, again, I'm stacked and loaded as well. So for here, what I teach them to do, and it's easier if this is a pole and I can come around the front and help them there, but if they keep their hands on the front of their thighs, and what I want them to do is I say, run your hands down to your knees and let your bum come back to the pole. So hands and knees, bum to the pole, keep your back straight. And they need to go slowly at that point. Now, at this point here, what will happen is this will be easier. So when they're more vulnerable, this will be easier. And it gives them the chance to just flex their spine, so flex your lumbar spine for me, to try and work out where their neutral is and get that a wee bit perfect. Because they might have lost a little bit by the time they get down there. So I can correct them. You go, okay, now you need to be there or you need to be there. You need to find that neutral. And then when they come up, I want them to stretch the band. So they push through their heels and they stretch the band. And it triggers them to do a, a, you know, a natural sort of movement pattern a little bit better. You'll have to work on and together you'll find that, you know, someone's doing it wrong, someone's doing it they can't get it right. You have to cue them really, really well. And sometimes you'll have to always modify your cueing depending on your client. So if she comes back again, come down to hands to knees, if her knees start coming forward too much, she's trying to, if she starts turning it into a squat, 
you know, I've got to come, you know, if that band's there, I've got to come in here and say, hey, listen, you know, you can't let your knees come forward. So some people come up again. As soon as they go down, because they're not very good at a hinge mechanism, they might go, oh, I can squat. If you try to go down again, they just throw their knees forward. And all of a sudden they're doing that, which drops their hips down and brings them forward. And then all of a sudden they're not doing a hinge, they're doing a squat, or sort of a halfway between a squat and a hinge, which is what you don't want. So come back up again. So if you can maybe keep your hands there, and they don't lock and they do come forward a bit. So if you can say, keep soft in your knees, start there, and then you just say, don't come forward at that point. And then you have to maybe just get your hands in and just help guide them back. So if their hips go back, shoulders come down, keep going for me. So <laughs> keep going, keep going. And they need to just keep those hips going backwards. I tend to sort of say, pretend this is like a filing cabinet drawer. You know, when you can't, you can't go up and down on those filing cabinets. If you, if, you, if you lift it up, it blocks. So you have to keep it level all the way back. So when she comes up through here, if these hips have to come directly backwards, it does drop down a little bit because she's dropping a little bit, but it's not like a squat where it drops all the way down. It's very, very subtle. So if you can try and teach them to think, don't let your hips drop down, they'll hopefully do the right thing. So let's try that again for me, Claire. So don't let your, your sort of, don't let your bum drop down. I want your hands to run down to your knees. Don't let your knees go forward. Shoulders forward, bum back to the pole. Shoulders forward, bum back to the pole. Bum back to the pole, bum back to the pole. Good, now come up, stretch the band. Now there's a couple of things you'll notice when you're doing this with your clients. As if you come down again for me. They come down to here. When they come up, sometimes the automatic response is to extend here. So you just do, they do that. So they leave the hips behind. And that's back extension, which is what we don't want. We want hip extension. So they've got to stay neutral here. And you know, don't mind getting your hands in there. You've got to sort of almost say, push that forward. And so they come up and push that forward into that position. And it will just take repetition and repetition and repetition. And it, because there's no axial load going down through here, don't be too concerned if they're getting it wrong the first time, second time, 10th time, 20th time. As long as you are curing them and they're slowly, slowly getting better, they're going to go out home without doing it perfect. But remember, by this point, they probably haven't got too much back pain going on. So they're not going to damage themselves by doing an incorrect deadlift because there's no weight that way. And then when they come forward, there's no weight down there. There's no sort of hinge forward load weight here that puts pressure on the lower back. All the load is coming back this way, which is all posterior chain muscle activation. And it gives them a really good chance to correct themselves. So the band is there for feedback and a bit of resistance and a bit of glute firing and hamstring firing. And then, of course, lower back firing, but there's no actual load down here. If they are really struggling, actually, you can jump back, um, and that band is too much, sometimes they're not strong enough. They might need a lighter band. The green's red here. I wouldn't go to blue unless you're an athlete. Um, but you could even drop down to a yellow or something that's got a little bit, even just a little, you know, the old school ther wide thin TheraBand, something to give them some sort of release, uh, resistance. Okay, it could be very, very light resistance and it may find it's hard anything, but it's enough to give them a bit of feedback, then that's great. 